Over the last decade, the number of people pawning high-end items and seeking business loans has increased by 10%. I don't live that lifestyle anymore, sadly. I've got some items here that I'd like to pawn. Now in its sixth year... What the hell is it? This pawn shop loans against virtually anything and everything with value. That is incredible. Owner James Constantino will consider big money deals. Oh my God. From anywhere in the world. I can smell the money. This morning, an inquiry has come in from Lanzarote. Joe, come and have a look at this. It better be interesting. It is. The fella's got a million euros worth of wine in a uh, in a restaurant. Whoa! I love oldie worldy things, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> That's not nice, is it? When I first heard the sum of a million euros, I was jumping up and down for joy. I thought this could be a big one, and we were going to earn a lot of money out of it. <laughs> Selling the wine on behalf of a client is entrepreneur Gilbert. What are you looking for on that? I love selling. I'm the go-to man on the island, of course. I would sell a kidney if I got the right price. They have a vintage wine collection dating back to 1855, and I believe there's over 4,000 bottles. Busy every day. Rainer, my dears, have a nice meal. Over from Tart. Gilbert's client and wine owner is 78 year old restaurateur and German expat, Aunt G. I like it to serve the peoples because I know all the peoples. Every day I see peoples I know, and that is what I like. But no more. I cannot do it till I am 100 years old. It's not possible, you know? I have to make slalom. <laughs> Seven months ago, Angie's husband Jürgen died, leaving herself and seven children, including 53-year-old Björn. I like this photo. That is the best photo from my husband. My dear. He enjoyed the moment and they know. And for this, we have a very good collection because he loved the wines. Not like the wines, he loved the wines, you know? Right. Like, no, I lived the wine. Yeah, 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 right. My husband likes wines and foods and Havanas and girls and me, and that is a good collection all together. <laughs> Jürgen started his wine collection in 1969. We have three rooms with wine. Very expensive? Yes, it's very expensive. All the wines are very expensive. Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, the oh. Queen Mother. Oh. This bottle they made for a birthday of Queen Mother. When we came here, we have nearly 6,000 bottles. But the collection is now smaller because we drink a lot by ourselves and with friends. And now it's not so much. This row is a special wine, Romani Conti, 1,700. One bottle. If you sit down and drink a bottle of this wine with your wife, <laughs> she loves you more and more, I, I think. I lose more than 1,000 euros. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Aunt G now wants to return to Germany and hopes to sell the wine as one lot. My husband was with heart and soul to collect these wines. I know that he will say from the heaven, it's OK, you make it, my darling. They want one million euros for the whole collection and have tasked middleman Gilbert with finding a buyer. I've approached James because of his reputation within the UK. He's the guy I believe can sell it. With me, of course. Closing deals on the weird and wonderful... I don't know who would be interested in this. Oh, yeah. Never actually had anything like it. ...hasn't always paid off. Oh, no. What have I done? James was put on this earth to make money, so if he loses it, he's absolutely devastated. His most recent purchase is a motorbike that is only for show. What is this? Chris Owls. You bought this? I got a bit carried away. You did this with the horse. Now you got this. They're typical things that I personally love to get involved with. And to be honest with you, I shouldn't probably have bought them. Today, to make room at the front of the store for his new bike, James has decided to finally let go of his beloved horse and armour. Good afternoon, brother. How are you doing, mate? You're all right. I'm OK, thanks. I've got an idea. We've been thinking this suit of armour 
trying to get everyone to sell it, basically. And offering a prize. Lawrence, you up for this? Depends what the prize is, James. Let's have a prize of 500 quid. How much are we selling it for? Well, let's say five and a half grand for the suit of armour. That's a fair price. And, and they have to pick up themselves? Or you've got to ride it over there. In half an hour. Good luck. May the best man win. Or lady. Ciao. Bye. Bye. Right, John, that suit of armour you want it, it's yours for five and a half grand. Get a bank transfer the next half an hour, I'm up a monkey. Cool. <laughs> Sorted. OK, game on. Oh, dear. <laughs> Despite head office being in Hatton Garden, James still likes to visit his sorry shops, especially when there's a new client with a big ticket item. This is a Bentley Mole saying it's absolutely beautiful. I mean, it is a dog's doodles, to be honest with you. The inside of it's like a, a private jet. They're amazing. They've got drinks, cabinets, fridges, TVs. But you've got to be careful. Some of these cars can be a little bit dodgy. There are a lot of clones out there as well. And so we need to do our checks thoroughly, get it all inspected, make sure all the numbers match up. Service, please. On your backs. Backs row, please. Pawning the Bentley is Ed, a 23-year-old head chef from Hertfordshire. Don't start going yet, just leave him on the front for now. After leaving school at 16, he's been working his way up the catering ladder. What's not to love about being in the kitchen, mate? It's hot and sweaty. You spend all your time in close proximity with men. That's why Matt loves it, isn't it, Matt? Table 21, two toasties and a sandwich. I was uh, head chef at 19, nearly 20. It is quite young, but in the chef world more than any, it's more about the talent rather than the age. And now we're going one step further and opening up a pub, running it for ourselves, training our own staff. Ed and his partners are planning to reopen a 17th century coaching inn in Buckinghamshire, but not before undertaking a major refurbishment. So this is going to be the first gastro pub. The business plan is to have four in four years which is quick progression for a gastro pub company. This one's got to be right before we move on to any more. So this here is where I want the, the roller specials board. Ed will be living in and running the pub with his girlfriend, Chloe, but the business is an extended family affair. My godfather's uh, invested a lot of time and money. I'm sort of more creative side. He's very much the accounting side. The project as a total is probably going to come to about 400, 450,000 pounds. We're short about about 50 grand in total that we uh, we need to finish off the project to the right standard. So that's what we're hoping to get. They're hoping to raise the 50,000 pounds quickly by pawning the two-year-old Bentley Mulsane. So this is the beautiful car that my godfather's lending me to take a loan out against. She's an absolutely stunning car. I'm hopeful that James has a good understanding of, of, of why we need the money and, and give us the money we need to finish the project. But will he be able to give Ed the cash he needs for his new business? With his flagship store in Hatton Garden, the heart of London's Diamond District, pawn shop boss James now has four gem experts working across his three branches. Hello, sir. How can Hello, I help you? sir. We have hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of gemstones coming through the door almost on a weekly basis, and the staff must be able to appraise everything, not just the diamonds. It's five carats. It's, a, it's a, a big boy, this one. At the Richmond store, the company's longest-serving gemologist, Kristen, has been sent an inquiry about a stone that's far from the norm. I've got an opal here from a customer that's in the boulder still, that's in the fossil. There's probably a few hundred carats worth. We do deal with gemstones and opals, but normally they're in a piece of jewellery, not in a rock. <laughs> it's a challenge, because, I mean, how do you sell something like that? <laughs> What do you think? So we've got a piece of rock? Yeah, it's not just a piece of rock. It's a fossil with an opal in it. Hi, it's Kristen from Prestige. You want my piece of rock? <laughs> Give me it. I'll sell it. I will. In the heart of the Lake District lives the opal's owner, 56-year-old David. I've had a cup of tea. With his two dogs, Sparky, Robbie, 
David? And his mum, Anne. Hello? Yeah? Don't forget, just one lump of sugar, please. Right. Thank you. Who he cares for full time. Oh, golly me, that's not very sweet. Well, you've had your lump of sugar in it. Oh, <laughs> oh well, never mind. I normally put your three or four sweeteners in. Three or four? Yeah. Don't forget the key, please. No, I've got the key. Okay. I do majority of the work, the washing, making lunch, making tea. Mum sort of got beyond sort of doing that sort of thing. Come on, Mrs. J, out you come. We've always done things together, even when Dad was alive. And then when you came along, got interested in stones, we used to go rock hunting together. Yeah. And you loved going round with your geological hammer. All you kept doing, hammer, hammer, hammer. Just by chance, Dad just stopped you hitting a stick of dynamite. <laughs> God, what would have happened if you'd hit that? We'd have got blown up. Oh, David, be careful with that. Ooh. His childhood outings led to a lifelong passion, and now David and Anne regularly sell some of his vast collection of gems at local craft fairs. I know my stones. <laughs> <laughs> morning, Doc. Good morning. Oh, it's a beautiful piece, that. We've both been in here for years. <laughs> we enjoy it. It's part of our lives, really, coming in here. Get some coffee, please. Yeah. Put some sugar in it, please. I tell you what, it's busy. There's not a soul out there. But David and Anne's outings are now at risk after months of car problems. Unfortunately, it's using an awful lot of water. We don't really know why. About every 30 or 40 miles, we have to stop and top the car up. It's a bit of a nuisance, really. It's come to the crunch now that something's going to have to be done. I've decided that I would try and sell my piece of boulder opal, which I've had for many years. I bought it when I was 16. I think it cost £30 or £40 then, which in that day was a lot of money. The minimum I would accept is £2,000 for it. If it's less than that, I would keep it, because it's worth more than that to me. Will the team be able to keep David and Anne mobile by finding a buyer for such an unusual piece? Over 1,000 inquiries come through the doors of the pawn shop every week. I want to sell some of my jewellery. OK. And over half of the team's working hours are spent securing buyers for those items. I've got someone who's uh, put a firm bid forward. Their latest client is their own boss. Well, I've had a fill of this now, to be fair. James has offered a £500 bonus to the staff member who sells the horse and armour. This was meant to be sold by now. I was just wondering if you're interested in purchasing a suit of armour. OK, then. OK, well, thank you. Bye. But they don't trade anymore. <laughs> Hello, Dean. It's Lawrence. Uh, from Prestige, we spoke a few months ago about a suit of armour. I'm trying to get through to someone, but they don't seem to be answering. Their phone doesn't even work. <laughs> Are you still interested? You don't know anybody, do you? It comes with a fibreglass horse. <laughs> How many phone calls you made, J-Mo? I've just bashed out a few emails. I've got someone calling me back. All right, you might as well stop, all of you, now, <laughs> before the embarrassment starts of me slaughtering you. I think, at the end of the day, as long as it's sold, it doesn't matter who does it, really. Bollocks to that! I want the 500 <laughs> quid! At Weybridge, new branch manager Helen has got an even bigger task on her hands, valuing around 4,000 bottles of wine belonging to restaurateur Angie in Lanzarote. I employed Helen because she's got a wealth of experience with dealing with high-end assets. She's very methodical. She was never going to leave any stones unturned and she was going to get the job done. There is about 20 pages with about 50 different types of wine on each page. I do enjoy a glass of wine, but I'm sort of more of a 5 for £25 pound kind of girl. <laughs> The sheer number was going to test Helen. It was going to take days and days to go through that package. If there's a big deal to be done... I don't think you'll have any problems getting 90 grand for that. This is where I'll come into my own, Roy. James does not want to miss out. Whether it's on land, oh. in the air or on the water. This is what it's all about. Oh, Jesus Christ! Today, he's had an inquiry about another unique vessel. 
Joe, have a look at this, look. What is it? A 60-foot Yorkshire keel. You like all this sort of uh, earthy stuff, no, don't you? No, I don't, James. Living rough. Oh. Do you like that? That's nice, isn't it? I love the taste of the decor. Well, we might get you to appraise these soft furnishings separately. Oh, my God, I'd love to go there. They've been living on it for 20-odd years. Oh, they They're live right... on it? Yeah. Can they go up and down on it? Yeah, I'm sure they've done oh. that. They've been together for 20 years. <laughs> I feel they're going to sit there they... holding hands for 20 years. <laughs> oh, James, stop it. Oh, dear. Couple Joe and David live on the houseboat in Nottinghamshire. Are you going to do anything today or just sit there? Hey, it's hard work planning your next job. These blinking pigeons. Oh, my bother to do the same tomorrow. It's finger marks all over this door. We've been together. 29 years. There was no one else in the pub, and I thought, oh, that's nice, and tried to make conversation, and he was pretty miserable, really. First date was, do you want to come and paint me boat? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, yeah I did. And I thought, this Blake's a charmer. <laughs> <sighs> ah, that's me, don't. Okay, you can put your brush down now. David and Joe have rebuilt the vessel from scratch over the last 18 years. We skipped when we bought it, put the roof on myself. Not everybody could see what we could see. We stood on it and thought, that'll make a brilliant home, didn't we? And then we did it. And we did it. Between us. <laughs> the boat is now a spacious two-bedroom home. Paid £5,000 for it. Scrap. There was no plans or anything. We walked round and said, that will be the bedroom, this will be the lounge. Well, we've not got the first idea how, how many man hours. It, it was just on and on for years. I am proud of it, and I sit down at night and look at it, and I love it, yeah but I want my next one now. Now they're keen to live on dry land and have set their hearts on renovating a 300-year-old bakery in neighbouring Leicestershire. As you can see, it uh, needs a little bit of work doing. Odd repair to the doors, needs a little bit of work on the roof here. Natural light, <laughs> they call it. This is the old oven. And that'll be a feature. That'll all be blasted back. We'll leave all that there. We'll leave that all brick. Goodness, it's so exciting. I love it. The boat is, is in absolute pristine condition. It's been professionally valued by a marine surveyor as 150,000. But we've got it on the market at the minute for 127 or thereabouts, because we're keen to sell. But we don't have the time to keep waiting because... No, because we need to get on with the boat. We are just waiting. Yeah. We need to get on with the bike. I want to get the roof on this year. Good girl. Go on, Lily. Good girl. Go on, babe. Go on in. It's a beautiful life here, really. When you sit out here now and look at all the wildlife. Yeah. You'll miss this when you're living in a house. Yeah, but we've got a river at the bottom of the garden, haven't we? I love the bay, love everything about it, but I'm so looking forward to doing something different, so I'm ready now. Joe and David aren't the only ones needing money fast for a restoration project. James is heading to Hertfordshire to meet head chef Ed, who wants a loan against his godfather's Bentley for his gastropub venture. I've had Bentleys before and um, they're pretty amazing cars. The pictures look absolutely phenomenal. It looks like a real beast of a car. We'll hopefully get it out on the road and give it a little blast. I'm really looking forward to it. And there she comes, in all her glory. Lovely. Hi, Ed. Hi, James. How you doing? You all right, mate? You all right? <laughs> it's lovely. So this is the car? This is the car. It's a beast, isn't it? It is. Uh, it's got a 6.75-litre engine. It's an absolute beauty. She's got a couple of modifications. It's the top spec. It's got the American speed wheels on it and the black grille. There's only a couple of those in the UK. Right. So and awesome. how many owners has it got? Do you know? One. Just one. So Just one. Uh, Phil's had it from new. Yeah. Yeah, his absolute pride and joy. OK, it's lovely. So, is this open? Yeah, so it's keyless, keyless oh. boot. And you've got some Bentley umbrellas in there. Yeah, so it comes, handy for it today. comes with all of the, uh, all the added extras. Uh, so it really is umbrellas. fully loaded, then? Yeah. I mean, it looks really sporty for a, for a big car. Yeah, it is sporty. I mean, if you put it in sport mode or extra sport mode... She smells great as well. In the back, we've had the uh, TVs put in and... Whoever sits in the back can control the seats, the air conditioning, the TV in the back, all through the iPads that's built into What's the that, is that? Bentley. Don't you just pull that down? Yeah, that's a coffee table in there. 
And then in the middle is the controls for all the back seats, for massage and heated seats in the back and the front throughout the whole car. Fantastic, it's beautiful. It's a lovely car. Is it all right if we take her out for a Absolutely. little spin? Absolutely, let's go. Yeah. She's purring away nicely. I know. For this, this is absolutely phenomenal, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, the car's really fantastic. It's the finishes on everything. The drive, it's just, she's just floating along. You can feel the power as well when you yeah, put it. Yeah, yeah, it feels almost like it's just sort of grazing along the top of the road, doesn't it? It's, uh, it's a beautiful amazing. drive. I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it, Ed. How many miles has she done, do you know? It's done nine and a half thousand. Is that it? I wonder why she felt so tight. It's just like, it's like a brand new car, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. It's a fantastic little car. Such a beast, but it feels like you just know under there is something pretty yeah, impressive. Yeah. It's like... And it's so elegant as well. When you're driving it, it doesn't feel like you're driving a huge car. No, it doesn't roll around like a boat, like some of the older, older Rolls Royces and Bentleys. So that's what happens when the Germans get hold of it. Yeah, exactly. They sort of uh, turn it into something good. So, Ed, like, it's pretty specced up, so you're probably looking at, what, well over 200 grand here from new? Yeah, I think the car at a base model is somewhere around 200, 250, and there's probably about 50,000 pounds worth of, of uh, specs and modifications. Yeah. So you're probably looking somewhere between 250, 300,000 pounds total price for the car. Let's give it a little bit of welly, shall we? That's lovely, that just glides along, doesn't it? It does, yeah, it's fantastic. Well, it's raining, mate. I think we better head back and uh, park her up and do some sums, I think. Yeah, no problems. Well, Ed, that was fantastic, mate. Did you enjoy that? Oh, it was lovely. Look, um, what are you actually looking for in terms of the money? Oh, uh, looking for £50,000. And when do you need it by? We need it really quickly in order to get this project finished and underway so we can get in there and, and open the business. OK, so, f well, 50 grand's a lot of money, so what I'm going to do is we're going to do a few more checks and then I'm going to come back to you. Yeah, yeah, no problems. Fantastic. But can James turn around that much money in super quick time? In Hatton Garden, the staff have banded together and put a request into Joe. Did you hear the talk about the water cooler in the office? <laughs> You're being silly. What do you think your name is, Bob Geldof? <laughs> James, listen. We're not here to save the world, we're here to do a bit of pawnbroking. We're talking about water. Yeah, but let's not, let's talk about pawnbroking. Any Rolexes coming today? I don't know, I'm sitting here being your PA. I'm turning my back now. Can I leave this conversation? No. <laughs> no. In the front office, Assistant Manager Michaels received the Boulder Opal sent by Kristen from the Richmond shop. How about that? You haven't been foraging around in your garden again, have you? <laughs> so what is that? It's a Boulder Opal. I bet that's a very difficult thing to value, Michael. What does the client want for it? Ideally, they're wanting into the thousands. It's one of those things where you know, it, it could be hit and miss. If this Opal runs through the stand, then we're in the money, really. But if that's just more of a surface thing and inside the middle bit is more bolder, hmm. then... Yeah. But we definitely need a very experienced pair of eyes to have a look at it. An experienced pair of eyes or a big pair of something else to get involved with it. <laughs> Things like this can be high risk. Hmm. It might be a dud, but... Cheers, Michael. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Proving tricky to appraise, James is taking the opal to jewellery expert Ian. We don't know the size of it because it's actually embedded in the rock. Ian loves that sort of stuff, so we're going to pop in and see him. He might be able to give us some indication of value. I'm hoping that he can. And he's always there for us and he gives us his true opinion and nine times out of ten he gets it right. Oh, my word, Ian, I feel a little bit underdressed. Do you now, darling? Yeah. I'd like to make you undressed. <laughs> I feel like I'm visiting the Queen for a knighthood. What do you have today? Well, I've got something really special for you. Really? And, uh Oh, Australian opal. Australian, is it? Well, in Sydney, in the rocks area, they will sell big chunks like this to the Chinese market. Really? And they're not cheap. They're not cheap? No. 
This is a very good example, in fact. You know, I like it because there's a lot of opal showing. But how deep does this opal go? You know. Really, though, it's a difficult one for us because, as you say, we don't know the depth of the opal. People always offer me raw diamonds and raw this and raw that. I never get involved because you never know what the end result is going to be. It can cost a lot. I suppose it's a little bit of a risk, is it? There's always a risk. It's business. It's only money. Who cares? <laughs> You know, have some fun, take a chance. So, well, look, thanks. It's been great seeing you again. Pleasure. Thank you. And we'll see you again. I'll let you know I'll get on with that. When yes, I get back it's to the a office. challenge. Exactly. Exciting. Exciting. Life's a challenge. <laughs> see you later. <laughs> Today would have been great if I'd have come here and he said, look, it's worth three, five, ten grand. But really, I haven't got an answer on the value because we really don't know how much opal is in that rock. And it's a risk and a punt. It's not something I'm used to, although the idea of it does excite me a little bit. In Weybridge, Helen's been working her way through Angie's wine collection. I was in contact with Helen on an hour-by-hour -hour basis because the wine package was so huge and vast and varied, it really needed a lot of attention. How are you doing with the Lanzarote wine? I'm about halfway through. I'm seeing quite a vary in prices, really. Some are just a little bit lower than we were expecting. Mm. So hopefully by tomorrow I'll have a, a final sort of retail figure for you for the for the whole lot. Lovely. OK, great. All right, thanks. Lovely, thanks. Bye. With five- and six-figure sums regularly at stake, James likes to test-drive vehicles before he will consider doing a deal. I'm loving it. Leaving his right-hand woman, Jo, to man the fort. Why am I always the one left behind? But today, they're both going to escape the hustle and bustle of London. Are we there yet? By heading to the Nottinghamshire countryside. God, I'm really excited. It's a proper day out for me. <laughs> it was so lovely getting out of the office. It was a beautiful summer, hot day, and we were going to go and look at a barge. I mean, what could be better? Look at that. I like countryside. I can't wait to uh, meet Joe and Dave. Oh, good. You're sounding more positive than normal. Well, yeah, I've turned a corner, you know that. Yeah, I know. I just saw you do it back there. We're looking forward to selling the boat and moving on with the next project. We've put a lot of heart and soul and blood and tears into her. But uh, it's a means to an end. Because as a couple, we've never lived in a house. Never lived in a house, no. So it's a whole new experience. But it's something we're looking forward to. Not the bills, obviously. No. But <laughs> Other barges with their barges. I wonder if they get up to Argy Bargy. I wonder if they like onion barges. Yeah. I've loaned on a barge before, but I've never sold one on. And this was going to be a real challenge for us. Wait for me. Well, be careful. Jesus, is that going to hold two at once? I'd bypass this if I were you. Oh, don't be wicked. James, you better turn around and get me. All right, come on. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Jo. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. And you. This is gorgeous. I'm already sold, by the way. Yeah, that's How it. brilliant. Oh, we can stop now, then. Oh, this is lovely, look. Wow. Oh, wow. It's amazing. This is the lounge. It's bigger than some cottages, isn't it, this? Oh, look, how lovely is this? Oh, I love the way you've decorated it, Joe. Yeah. It looks well comfy. When I first saw the barge and how lovely it looked and the setting, I just thought I could really imagine this lifestyle. Fire up, here we go. Oh, yeah, he loves an engine. I like it. Do you know what? It's raining. It's raining! It's raining. Oh, how funny. Should I put the brolly up quickly? Have you got a brolly? No. <laughs> Sorry about her if you don't get how much. This is what it's all about. Look at this. Life on the open canal. Right, James, it's all yours. <laughs> right, here I go. Dave, are you not a little bit worried that he's got your not house all, still, in his hands? Your actual home? I'm sure his money's more powerful things than this. Have you seen them being smashed to pieces, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Don't know what she's now. We know what we're doing. We've got it covered, please. You're putting me off. I'm actually liking this. This is... I feel empowered. I wouldn't think you need to turn it much, you're just going a straight line. You don't understand, this is boy stuff. Boy stuff, yeah. Joe, they're being horrible to me. At the end of the day, barging really isn't my cup of tea. I'm more of a Ferrari man, but I could appreciate it for what it was. It was a lovely, relaxing day out, and it was really nice to meet the owners. So, Dave, what are you actually looking for? 
we're looking for about 128. Well, it don't seem like a lot of money. It's not a lot of money, to be honest. But this is a lifestyle change for someone. Yes. I yeah. can imagine someone yeah. stressed but has got some equity in something that they can maybe come and change their whole life. Sounds like me. You're enjoying this, aren't oh, you? I am, actually, but don't tell anyone back at the office. Oh, and that little duckling family. The ducklings better mind me, Joe. Yeah, they will. Oh, there's another boat coming. He'll get out of your way. I forgot I was in a big boat. He'll be ricking himself up now. Yeah, mine out, small boat. He's probably feeling a little bit inadequate. Inadequate, yeah. That's why you're loving it. Yeah, yeah he is. Look, he's waving. Right, right, right. Hey! Hold on, my turn. <laughs> Not bad for a beginner. Don't call me a beginner. You know I'm an expert <laughs> everything I touch. <laughs> That was a great day out, wasn't it? That it was a lovely day so out. Good. Lovely to meet you both. Oh, we're going to do some work on it and Thank we'll come back to you. Thank Thanks. you, Thank Lovely to meet you, Good to meet you, Joe. Thank you so much. Thanks. Cheers. Joe. No, I'm all right. I can get up. Thanks. I think both were impressed uh, with the quality of the boat. Hopefully we'll hear soon. But I really hope that, that they can do something and help us move on. Look, this ain't going to be an easy one. I mean, how many people have got 128 grand to spend on a boat that they might want to live in somewhere? We might be able to come back with some news. Hopefully, we can. I'll tell you what, I think I might have started the menopause. Really? I can't cool down. Really? <laughs> can you get that aircon on and get a bit of wind up? Let's go back to London. Come on. Oh. What a lovely day. It was brilliant. Thanks for letting me come out. That's all right, you needed an airing. Back in Lanzarote, Gilbert is waiting to find out if James has sourced a buyer for Angie's 4,000 bottles of wine. We're looking for around a million euros for the whole collection. The collection is very rare and we need to sell this for Angie. Uh, she wants to now retire and I believe she wishes to go back to Germany, so if we can help her do that, that'll be fantastic. We've done so much groundwork on the appraisal process of that wine because it was such a big number and we didn't want to get it wrong. Good evening. Gilbert, hi, it's James here. How you been, mate? You all right? I'm all right. I'm actually still in the uh, the cellar. There are still some bottles uh, uh, that are not on the list, so we're still ploughing through them. OK. I'll be straight with you. There was a varied lot on there. Some of the wine is run-of-the-mill restaurant wine, but mm -hmm. amongst that lot, there was some quite good stuff in there. But I must say, you know, the million yeah. euro figure put on it isn't realistic. OK. We can't value it as a retail item. We have to value it as an auction lot. So what we've been doing over the last few weeks is trying to find someone to take the whole parcel. Now, that, I must tell you... It hasn't been doable for us. I, I regret to inform you of that. OK. Um, it's probably not what you wanted to hear, but... You know, they feel very confident about their collection. Um, this collection will go, and we've just got to find that buyer. You never know, Gil, but there might be someone out there for it. Fantastic. James, thanks for all your help, and uh, uh, let's see what we can do with this collection. Cheers, mate. Thanks, Gilbert. Fantastic. Cheers. All right. Bye. The list of wine was absolutely endless, but we were three quarters of the way through and we were at €35,000 as a price. It just wasn't going to happen with the million euros. Gilbert was still looking at the remaining bottles of wine and he was hoping that he'd find a gem amongst them. I wasn't that optimistic and I wasn't willing to take a punt on it and that's business. It's not great news, but I'm determined to sell this total collection for uh, Angie. We'll find a buyer somewhere. How are we doing? Hello. I've just had a phone call from James and uh, unfortunately he hasn't found a client for us. But... It's not a problem no, for us, not... we can wait. we we'll find it in the future. We will find him. Quite sure, for this wine, quite sure. During we are waiting, we will drink wine and make uh, a good life. At the pawn shop's headquarters, office manager Joe is busy getting distracted. Why is there one fly in here? I actually want to kill that fly. James, can you kill this fly? How big is it? It's like normal fly size. It looks like a bat and leaving it alone. <laughs> 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 Did you see that fly impersonation? <laughs> <laughs> I just turned round because I could hear. <laughs> well, I was doing a fly impression. That is funny. Mm. <laughs> oh dear. 
In Cumbria, David and Mum Anne are hoping the Opal will raise a minimum of £2,000 to buy a new car. You know what they're after, don't you? They do like their biscuits. Not many Not in many there. Not many in there. Good grief. The cupboard's bare, boys. These sorts of items, they are high risk. So without further investigation, we have no real idea of how much good quality Opal is in the middle of this stone. I just hope it's worth a reasonable amount so we can put a, at least a good deposit down on, on the new car. Hopefully we can not only make him happy, but also ourselves and a potential buyer in the future happy. So yeah, I, I do hope he accepts the offer. Finding out it's only worth £500 would be very disappointing. I'm just sort of sat here hoping, but it's a case of the unknown. Hello. Hello. David? Yes. Hi, this is Michael from Prestige. How are you? Hi. No, not so bad. And yourself? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. I'm giving you a call. All about your Opal. Oh, great. Um, it's hard to gauge how much Opal is inside this boulder. It is a high risk. Mm. We have to negotiate up, so we, we were able to push up some offers. Mm. Uh, I do appreciate that, obviously, um, you've got to make a a bit of a living out of it. I mean, our offer would be... Um, it would be £2,000. Let me have a word with my mother and sort of see what she thinks. OK, sure. They're offering me around about £2,000 for it. What do you think? Well, as I've said to you, you know, at the end of the day, it's your piece of opal and really and truly you're the only person that can decide what would be the minimum amount you would accept for it? Yes. I'll accept the 2000 If you can't sell it down in Hatton Garden... Nobody um, can. I don't think anybody else can. No. OK, then, well, thank you very much for that. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. It couldn't have had a better sort of uh, crack at the whip, really. He might cut it and all there is is just a great lump of brown sandstone, you know. It's just one of those things. Well, I think you've done the right thing. There's a lot of space in there for both Opal and Boulder. Who knows which it is. It's certainly going to help to buy another car. Can't get anything much worse than what we've got at the moment. If there is Opal, we could double, triple our money. If it's not, then it's a very expensive paperweight. Recently, the team have been competing for a £500 prize to sell James's horse and armour. Well, we've all had a, a little bite of the cherry trying to sell it, but um, and people don't want to buy it. If I had a lump of cash, that's definitely not the first thing I'd go out and buy. <laughs> you must be mad. <laughs> you all right, Josephine? Yeah. Um, what's happening with that armour, that suit of armour out there? It's been there ages. You're going to have to admit it, defeat on this, I think. Oh, God, please. It can't stay there much longer, James. That's like a big chunk of money just sitting there doing nothing. It's a boo-boo, isn't it? It is, really. Well, I've had them all working on it, but there's no-one out there. It's just such a specialised thing. We're just going to have to try and forget about it for a bit. <laughs> forget about it? I've been thinking about that helmet. We're going to uh, basically use it as like a... You know in the old day when the teacher used to make you sit in the corner with a hat on? Dunce's hat? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to use the helmet as a sort of penalty thing for anyone who makes any Dang, mistakes. that is cruelty to the staff. Oh, well, no, they'll enjoy it. Oh, I love the idea. That really solves the problem. You like that? No. All right. <laughs> I admit defeat. There's nothing I can do about it. We're stuck with it, all right? Is that what you want to hear? Oh, I don't want to make you say it. Well, you are. You're driving me to despair with it. I actually try not to think about it. I look the other way when I'm walking in the mornings, yeah, and now that... you're bringing it to my attention Yeah, again. but that just says it, doesn't it, that you're trying to avoid it. It's no point trying to avoid things. You've got to deal with them. If that's what you're going to do, though, it'd be funny, I suppose, but that doesn't solve getting rid of the blimmin' thing. Now that we're stuck with the horse and armour and the nutcracker, I really need to keep an eye on him when these big, unusual, shiny things come in. I just feel like I need to be behind him going, don't do it, don't do it. On 
the canal in Nottinghamshire, David and Joe are waiting to find out whether James has found a buyer for their houseboat. I'm a pawnbroker, not a, a barge broker at the end of the day, so it was a quite a tough gig. But I think I've got something that they might well be happy with. The couple hope to sell the barge so they can renovate a derelict bakery and create a new home. We need to get 128,000 and we're desperate to get started on it. So it means a lot to us today. Hello. Joe. How are you? It's James here from Prestige. How have you been? You alright? Yeah, we're, we're just really eager to um, find out what's happening. Well, have you exchanged on the bakery? Not as yet, no. Right, so you need these funds to get the hold of the bakery, really, don't you? We need to do it as soon as possible, really. Right, OK, otherwise you might lose the bakery. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Right, OK. Well, look, we've been working very hard. Yeah. Um, we've been in touch with brokers, dealers, private individuals. And when we sent them over the stuff, they were very interested in marketing it, because there are similar boats here, and probably right. not as nice as yours, for sort of more money, to be honest with yeah, you. That's what I we know. discovered. But I can tell you, as from today, I haven't got a buyer for it. Right. So it's a bit disappointing in that respect. Yeah, yeah. If you do need to exchange on the bakery... And it gets to the wire on it, I would be prepared to do a loan... ..on that boat for 50 grand if it helps you guys out a bit more. Might just give you a bit of breathing space. Lovely. It's something yeah. to think about anyway. Um, yeah. So it's not a total loss. I mean, thank you for everything you've offered us. Yeah, obviously I'm quite disappointed because it, it meant so much to us, but I yeah. know you're trying your best to help us, so... Buyers out there um, with 100 grand in their pocket are yeah. few and far between at this moment in time. Yeah. But the other offer still stands, and if you want to come back to me, I would love to help you with it. Lovely. Thank you very much. OK. Cheers. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. God, you know... I don't know, I really... I can't stand making those sort of phone calls. It's like... She was such a lovely woman. It's a no. He's not managed to find anyone. He did say he would happily secure us a loan on it. Okay. But, yeah, it's a no. It's a big ask. But uh, there you go. Back to square one. Do you know what? We've failed, which is what? really, in essence, has happened here. We have not managed to sell their boat. All right, they've been trying themselves and they haven't had any luck either, but they've come to me because they felt that I may be able to pull, pull a stop out and get it done, and uh, unfortunately, it hasn't happened. Gutted, really. We were hoping to move on. This is going to set us back quite a bit, but we'll keep on trying. No doubt, someday, somebody will buy it. Something will happen. It's going to go sometime soon and we will get our house. We'll get our first house together. Twenty-three-year-old Ed is waiting for news of a loan against his godfather's Bentley to pay for the refurbishment of his gastro pub. When you're lending someone fifty thousand pounds of your own money, there are a lot of different factors that come into it. So it's not just the value of the car. Ed, you're right. Yes. How are you doing? Yeah, good, thank you. Well, look, Ed, we've been working on the numbers. As you can probably appreciate, with a brand new car, uh, there's some huge sums, and as soon as you drive them out of the showroom, they, uh, the depreciation on these big numbers are quite heavy, so yeah. there's all that to consider. Saying that, um, she drives like a dream. She's low mileage, she's uh, fully loaded. So I think we're really in a position where we can give you some numbers. To be honest with you, your 50 grand isn't a problem. In fact, I can double it <laughs> if you need it. So Fantastic. There's 100 grand on the table, and if you want to draw on it, it's up to you. Brilliant. Thank you very much, James. That's really going to make all the difference to our business and help finish off. So. Fantastic, mate. There well, look, I'll look after it for you and give me a call when you, when you want it back. Thank you very much. Cheers, James. Cheers, Thank Ed. you. Bye. My godfather's going to be ecstatic, that was what we wanted. Um, it's great to know that he can give us uh, more money, but I think the 50,000 is all we needed, that's what we set out for. It'll allow us to complete the project, so yeah, really, really happy. It's a no-brainer. When these lovely cars come in and the value's there, we can put funds into the client's account almost straight away. It can be done literally within half an hour. It's a win-win situation all round, and there's another 50 grand uh, on the table should they need to borrow it at a later date, so yeah, it's good. So, yeah, it looks like I'm getting the bus home, but uh, for all the right reasons.